The billionaire miner Gina Reinhart's family legal battles have prompted calls for a review of the way that family trusts are used in Australia. In documents released this week, Gina Reinhart's children allege that she told them that unless they agreed to her proposed changes to their family trust deed, they may be bankrupted by a capital gains tax liability. And tax anal analysts are now calling for a closer look at the way that family trusts are being used by wealthy Australians who want to avoid paying their fair share of tax. Meredith Griffiths has our report. Labor Senator Doug Cameron is worried that family trusts are being misused in Australia. I just think uh, fundamentally that uh, you know these super rich uh, uh, multi-millionaires and billionaires have to pay their fair share of tax. It's not fair that uh, you know a, 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 a boiler maker or a fitter or a bus driver or a cleaner uh, have to pay their tax. Uh, and yet uh, super rich people can actually establish these trusts and pay no tax on billions of dollars of income. I just don't think that's fair. His concerns have been prompted by documents released by the New South Wales Supreme Court this week relating to the family of Australia's richest woman. Three of Gina Reinhart's children say she told them if they were to access their family trust now, they would possibly engage a huge capital gains tax liability that they might not be able to pay. That's supposedly why she's trying to prevent them from accessing the funds until 2068. Senator Cameron says such family trust arrangements could be costing the Australian economy. He'll pursue the matter with the Tax Office and Treasury during Senate estimates in May. Firstly, I'll be asking how much is the, the cost of uh, these super trusts uh, to Australia? Uh, what are the benefits that Australia uh, supposedly receives through the establishment of these trusts? Basically, what is the cost-benefit analysis? Taxation law professor Dale Bocabella from the University of New South Wales agrees that legislation around family trusts needs to be reviewed. I think um, Senator Cameron's comments are, are valid. They, they should be looked at to see what, what are the costs and benefits associated with these discretionary trusts. But quite clearly, the lawyers have basically um, d devised them and developed them for this asset protection thing. That's the key point. Now, then you've got to ask yourself, well, is it a good thing that um, you know, creditors can't get their hands on assets when they're owed money? Is it, is it a good thing that divorcing spouses can't, you know, in the past couldn't get a, a hands on assets in discretionary trusts? Um, that, that's the sort of, they're the sort of questions I think we you know, have to look at. Uh, but then, of course, when, so that's the non-tax angle, if you like. But when we move over into the tax arena, that's a, a whole set of different questions then. We have to sort of look at it again. He says discretionary family trusts are being abused so people can avoid paying their fair share of tax. Discretionary trusts have modest amount of money, 600, 800,000, uh, producing income, I don't know, let's say it's 100,000 100, a year. You can split that across uh, a number of family members and vary the allocations from year to year. You can make some fairly significant uh, tax savings. So the short answer is people, you know, middle Australia, modest, um, modest asset holdings can, can make some, you know, substantial tax savings. There's no, there's no question about that. Professor Bocabella says there's no way of knowing exactly how many family trusts there are in Australia, but he says they're on the rise. We know that if you, you visit a financial planner, you visit a financial planner today and you've got a few assets, you know, you own some assets, one of the first things they will tell you is think about a discretionary trust. So we know that they're growing in number. There's no, you know, you don't have to debate that. It's, it's absolutely clear cut. But tax lawyer Greg Carl says family trusts are not being abused. That is not my experience because if we're talking about uh, wealthy individuals, all of the trust income has to be distributed and the beneficiaries who receive it pay tax at their marginal rate. So if they're wealthy individuals, they're generally going to be paying tax at, at or near the top marginal rate of 46%. If the trustee doesn't distribute the income, then the trustee is taxed at 46%. So the, tr the income has to go somewhere, and it's only if it's distributed to someone who is on a low tax rate uh, that you get any overall tax saving. That actually may apply for people who you wouldn't regard as wealthy, where none of the individuals are paying tax at the top marginal rate. But when you extrapolate that to the uh, wealthy section of the community, generally speaking, the trust doesn't generate any material tax savings. That's tax lawyer Greg Cale ending that report from Meredith Griffiths.